So for him, you, I mean, in the afternoon, having a minestrone soup and a cup of tea, is, that's fusion. That's fusion. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I can't wait to see him again. No. He's so cool. Who is this? He was the bass player on this. It's long to explain, but it was a it was like a thrown together workshop. I, I was telling you about it a little bit where six different musicians from six different countries came together and they had to make a concert in one week. Mm. And the bass player was from Christian was the drummer, and the bass player was from Italy. Oh, okay. Mattia. 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 Oh, I saw that somewhere. Mattia. Okay. You ready for some pasta, honey? Nico? Flit? I didn't get any. Where do you live? You said oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, I live in a, um, a town about half an hour away called okay. French Town. Say when. Oh, uh, probably. That'll be perfect. Yeah, it looks good. There's lots, so please eat it. This and is it's, uh, technic it's actually in uh, one state over it, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Uh, Are you ready? Yeah, finish it again. Right on the edge of the river. Mm -hmm. What a nice place. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's pretty, pretty nice. You know, it's yeah. kind of a river town. I I really, really Thank win. you. Oh, sorry. Yes. When? When? No, <laughs> also, on, also on the Delaware, also, where this town is. Yeah. Mm. Are you working full time as an engineer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I. I do I, I do like freelance work as as an engineer, so it's oh. like it's it, full time when it, yeah. when it comes around. When it is full time, yeah, yeah, when it is full time, at least especially when it comes to working here, especially. Yeah. You know, like whenever the work comes around. Yeah. But you don't have a you don't have a real job. Uh, not side. really. No. Well, I I do work as a as a waiter actually uh, a couple days a week sometimes usually one day a week. But that's not a real job. This is his real job. Well, I don't know. Right? I don't know yet. Whatever real job means. You no. Know. Yeah, this is real job. He's an, a genius at this. Yeah. <laughs> Just boom, 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 boom. You know, Gino come in and this is the this is the ma maestro, and this is the genius. They're they're just I don't know how do you do it. Which which is which, but. I pay him. Gene, I <laughs> so you Gene, basically will, Gene will come in. Maestro will come in. Maestro will come in and. Oh, wait. So I read that note, that piano yeah, note. Stop, stop, stop. That piano note. You know, or. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, listen to that. There's three notes in that solo out of tune, you know, a horned, a horned instrument, no less. Amazing. A genius here gets on there and goes, okay, it's done. Of course, Gene's. Gino sitting over here going, well, wait a minute, no, 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 they're a pair, they're just like, they're yeah. watching a symphony in action be made, it's amazing. Wow. Well, that's the way it should be. Yeah, but it's not necessarily what, the way it is. Also. No, that's true, yeah. really, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's the best mixing environment I've been in. You gotta get out more often. In all, <laughs> in all three of my studio experiences. <laughs> in all three of my I love self-effacement. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you, Britain, for that. <laughs> but are these uh, it's not your songs, is it? Or no. There is an ode to Eddie on there. It's an ode to Eddie Jefferson. All of the songs written by Richie Cole. You know who that is? No. Eddie Jefferson? I don't think so. He was probably. I'll he was him. before Lambert Hendrickson Ross, wasn't he? Yeah. And you know about them, yeah. right? This is the guy who. Probably he, he was the one who started the whole he thing. He invented right? vocalese. Right. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. He is Mr. Vocalese. Died in Richie Cole. I thought that was mm. Joe Hendricks. Who? John Henry John came Hendrickson. later. later. That was Leonard after. Hendrickson Ross. Yeah. If Eddie hadn't died, you know, he was already up there a little bit, but if he yeah. hadn't died, who knows? Yeah. Do you have some recordings of him here? Mm. Yeah, there are. You can find them. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll play some stuff Please. on my computer. Please. I had to get some things. Nobody's recorded. Um, one person has recorded one of these songs. Did it just fall? What the hell is that? I don't know. It sounded like, like the door or something. 
Well, this thing's shaking. It must have been this. Uh, the leg probably is not strong enough, and it dropped down. Uh, oh, I don't have it all the way down. It's not all the way down, honey. Oh, is that what you want? <laughs> all the way. So, anyway, Eddie Jefferson, yeah. And so the three of these songs are written by Richie, and they are in an ode to Eddie Jefferson. Okay. What time is it? Speaking of which. Five. Is it five is or it is it six? Is it five or is it six? Five. Okay, so this is right. I have to make a very important phone call at six o'clock. So, yeah, those are the three songs that are original. The rest, I say originals. I mean that I don't have to break an arm and a leg to get licenses and all that stuff for. Open fire, two guitars. No, wait, I did it. No, I still haven't found publication material for that. I can't even find it, not even on Harry Fox. Open, Open fire. fire. I can't find you it, it anywhere. Mike Stoller, so I'm writing to Artie again, Artie Butler. Does that have anything to do with Stoller? Is that the same Stoller? Yeah, Stoller, Mike Stoller. Yeah, but how's he connected? Isn't he connected with another name? Stoller, something in Stoller or Stoller yes, or something? Yes, yes, through the years. And he's also now... Yeah, but what was that? I don't remember. He's also now doing... Um, he's still alive. Yeah, he's doing a Broadway show with Artie Butler, who wrote one of the other songs I'm doing, Here's to Life. Huh. And... Artie, somebody got hold of Artie, said this I'm doing this thing. This is not the stole I'm talking about. I'm just wondering said, if okay. related. Said I'm doing this thing, and, and so Artie wrote to me and said, you're doing this thing, I want to hear it. Okay, yes. So I need to write back to him and say, hey, could you please contact your buddy Mike Stoller and tell him I can't find the, you know, I can't get the license to do this thing from Harry Fox. I lied on, on CD Baby. They said, okay, where do you, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who wanted to put Trust me yourself. <laughs> But you have a publisher for it or when you put it out yourself? No, her own label. Yeah. Why not? I'm just now registered with the Grammy office. I call my friend Vicky over there. What do I need to do? <laughs> She's in now. Um, label. And you can submit anything from a label. You don't have to be a body member. I didn't know. I didn't either. Yeah. She said, you did what? I said, I became a voting member. What? Well, you dummy. <laughs> I don't have to be a voting member. All I have to do is submit it for my label. Mm. And you have to be a voting member by June 30th in order to submit. Mm, so it's too late anyway. Mm -hmm. On that aspect. But mm -hmm. from my label, it's done. I'm I dropped the CDs off to the Grammy office Monday. And then I go to lunch with two Grammy yeah, executives. You know what? <laughs> I do. She's arranging it. Wow. You have to deal with that. And I'm trying to understand. Mm. If you throw something into the into the Grammy pot mm -hmm. to be considered, right. how That's are you fucking going to hear? The people who are the voting members, how are they going to know that your record even exists? Without if you're voting member, right? you're sent you're sent everything that's turned in. Or you go to a site and everything That's is there. bullshit. Yeah, you go to a site. But what if you don't go to the site? Then you don't vote. So How can you vote if you don't listen? Oh, I'm sorry. This is to go on top if you wanted more spice. Anyone? Uh -huh. Sure. Thank you. I was, just, I, was gonna, I was wondering, like, do you get a, like a ranking? Like, is there like, is it just like I don't a know number, how that goes. number of rankings that sort of thing? thing, or is it just like only the people who are in the top so and so? I was wondering that. Whoever has, there's a top percentage of votes, like it's, um, I don't remember, they told me today, I don't remember. There's a top percentage of votes, and then those go on. Those are the ones right. that are nominated. Ah, uh, yeah. So let me answer. So all you go, right. and if you're submitted for consideration, you're not nominated. You know, and so many mm -hmm. people confuse that. You're only being considered. Yeah, okay. And you know how many thousands? There must be thousands. <laughs> yeah, they only do five, right? I don't, I don't remember. I'll find out one day. So, mm -hmm. 
My question is this. And I told them all that I'm having a concert on September 12th at the White House. <laughs> or Richie Cole. <laughs> Wish you could be there. What? What's your question? The deadline is August 31st. Right? Mm -hmm. Last day of August. I think it's the 30th, isn't it? Oh, 31st. August. Last time I looked, it was the 31st. It's the 31st. Right. Yeah. Now, the voting occurs. What's the deadline on the voting? I don't know yet. Well, it's got to be before the end of the year. Well, they announced because they it. Because they have the Grammys in the that's beginning that's part of the sure. next year, right? Thank you. They announce it in December. Yeah, so that means that their voting has to happen before then. Right? I think it happens some. It has to be by. So hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're trying to make this deadline for this year, mm -hmm. and if they vote that the that the results are going to happen in December, how are you going to have the opportunity to have people even hear the shit? Why what? not give it a whole year? No, darling. Why not give Excuse it a whole me. year? Excuse me. Why not, before I mass produce this thing, have Grammy Award winner, no. female artist, whatever? Why not? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to have it mass produced anyway, but, but no, no, no. I have it, I already have people it. People are going to know about it between Once now I and have December. The, are you kidding? How marketing. You know? Marketing. I am a marketing whiz. It's okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's already, they already want, want me and this CD that I've promoted in South Africa in various places in Europe. It doesn't help for the Grammy. And I don't care about, I mean, yep. it's, it's. What did I just hear? <laughs> what I'm saying, I, I, I didn't finish it. I didn't, wasn't going to say I don't care about what you think. Because I don't, don't want to say that. <laughs> She's on her own trajectory. I don't want to say that. Right, yeah. No, I do care about what you, I do care about what you think very much, but but what you, you sure don't. About that? But what you don't. Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have you. It's for the record. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad it's being recorded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise. Get the tape. Get the tape. Like, March in. <laughs> oh, Mr. Carter. March in. <laughs> I just wanted to share. This. That's funny. So. um... It's okay. I do a lot of marketing. I'm doing it out in California while I'm out there, man. I'm doing it. Oh gosh, it's a lot. I'm doing it with the executives from the Grammy office, for heaven's sakes. I'm doing it with people from the Emmys. I've been invited to party after party after party. Believe me, <laughs> I'm here. How did I get here? I just met you in San Antonio when? A month ago. Hello. Mm -hmm. Would anybody like a little bit of this um, lovely salsa on your... I had this very nice, Frank. <laughs> Would you like a little more pasta? Oh, thank you. Well, as I right. said, right. as I said right. when you do win, Did I'll be hitting the party circuit with mm -hmm. you for sure. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> so hey. just, just don't forget about me keeping in mind. No, once I win, <laughs> no, once, once it's announced, yeah. the second it's announced, I'll have gigs lined up all over the friggin' United States, and that CD is gonna be bam. You need a live mixer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. I need my own sound man. Exactly. I'm sure you would actually if you're going on the exactly. store. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or who else but the person who mixed it and the bass player? Not the bass player. Who helped <laughs> mix it? <laughs> You can be the tour manager then. No, thank you. Driver. Are you kidding? <laughs> Roadie. <laughs> you think there's a chance to get in there? Right? <laughs> I don't know. Sounds like My big bass business. player. Mm -hmm. Oh, for the live tour. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tyler. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be carting any babies around. I need people who can take care of themselves. On a tour, I don't mm -hmm. home cook. I know how to do that. <laughs> I need to be able to say, bring me a Starbucks too, okay? God damn it, or get lost. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> mm. How you doing over there? You all right? I'm all right. So tell you me about you. the United you. States? <laughs> <laughs> so you came to the States before Christian, and that was to perform music, or what? Mm, 
I've been here, first time I was here, I just went to New York for two months to check out the scene. Oh, and see okay. what was going on. Mm -hmm. How old were you? 20. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, and I've been in California on a, oh, yeah? like, just holiday trip for Nevada. Wow, uh, oh, that's fun. Nice. You went to Vegas? Vegas? Yeah. Wow, what a wild life, huh? Yeah. Woohoo! Did you have fun? Did you have fun? I, I didn't really like it, actually. I think Vegas is a terrible place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. You've been there, Nick? I'm I'm never but been I'm very happy that I've been there. <laughs> yeah, so I can say it. Yeah. <laughs> From experience. Well, I think like almost any gambling town that's known, that's known specifically for that is always a little, a little weird to me. It has a weird yeah. vibe. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, but Vegas isn't... Desperation or something. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. The energy there is so weird in Vegas. Yeah, so... But we came by car, I think that's the, uh, the gives you a much stronger impression of it mm. than coming mm. by plane because you come you come out of the desert. Mm. I mean you drive from, from LA. Nothing, from came from yeah. LA uh, San no, we came from San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. Went through and then down to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that was really I mean then you understand all this richness richness, what is that in the desert? That's just water in the way, you know, and this city coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's mafia. Yeah, yeah it's totally mafia. mafia. <laughs> Totally mafia Nothing built, but mafia. Yeah. still totally mafia run. Yeah. Oh, what? Wow. They run a lot of things. My boys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, Italian friends. Okay, Frank. No. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Mattia, well, if you have yeah, He knows. <laughs> Paul Mattia, yeah. Well, Paul Mattia, yeah. 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 Very good. What were you studying? Oh, just with school. I mean, we just went to concerts. And did, I did some private lessons. Oh, I see. Like Drums. Yeah. With who? Uh, ben Allison. Bass player. And ben another. Ben Allison. I know that name. Yeah. What do you know? He's a bass player? He's a bass player, yeah. He's doing mm -hmm. well. I know the name. Yeah. Man. I don't know who he is. No, and our sax player, Michael Blake. I know that name yeah. also. Mm -hmm. And uh, a Norwegian bass player living here. Ah. Ivan Opsen. Mm. Yeah. I know bass one. Yeah. Yeah. My little brother. Yeah. My little brother. <laughs> so, that, so that's the part of the family that I'm in, technically, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it out loud anymore. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're in my wing. You're in the family. Way. We're in a good place. Anyway. Soaring up towards that Grammy. <laughs> Only the first. Only the first one, yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of ideas. So, Gene. Yeah, babe. You have recording studios, or studio, I mean, I see RP, or PM Records. Jason <coughs> Michelle, that's me. No. <laughs> PM Records you and just then just realized the video is on. No. And, then, <laughs> and then there's there's um what's the other one? A computer? Uh, Recording studio. What do you call it now? The studio? Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the system MSP. The system MSP. Music sound picture. So you do pictures as well. What do you want? I don't know. What, what do you mean? We music sound music picture. Sound picture. We that manic mean? manipulate picture. We have also sound for picture as well. Oh, Old sound time. for right. picture. Mm -hmm. uh, we can deal, we can oh. edit video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you wish. No, <laughs> he wants my pic. Oh, he wants my movie now. I get it. Anyway. Oh, no. That's right. So, but that's edited out. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> That's what this means. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got the hand in it. So, um, great. And you, you recorded a lot of different bands, correct? You have them on your label. Like, who? <laughs> you can look at my website. You can figure that out. Do I have to say it? You know that. It's on the website. Have, have any, what is your website again? <laughs> pmrecords.com. Okay. Please visit. <laughs> <laughs> you have 
Yeah. Yeah. Great pictures. <laughs> Just a key hanger. <laughs> you have some great photos and music on there. And one of the photos that I love is you with the, some other bass players, including Ron Carter. Who's that camera looking at? Including Ron. <laughs> I'm looking at the pot. So one have of the, you looked at the picture? One of the photographs. Is it okay over there? It's fine. Are you all right with the angle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, one of the pictures on your website includes Ron Carter and some other very famous bass players, including, what is his name, John Hendricks? No, what is his name? Ron no, Carter's not on my website. No, there's a photograph. Where did I see that photograph? With Ron Carter? Yeah, a bunch of bass players. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was at the, uh, at the uh, next to last IAJE gathering, which happened in New York City, right? And I just was walking down the aisles of the displays, and I saw these bass players all standing around there, so I walked up and I said, hey, what's up? <laughs> Next thing I know is people are taking pictures, ridiculous. You know? I mean, it was, I've never had, been in a situation where people were taking something, there was, must have been like three or four different photographers, and they're all going click, 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 click. So who are the bass players? That other than yourself, that warranted all of this publicity? Well, there was Ron Carter, who's probably known as one of the top bass players of all time. And Bob Cranshaw, which has played with Sonny Rollins for a long time. Still does, occasionally. And um, John Levy, who was a bass player, but he then turned into the music business and became a manager and I knew him when I was working with Sarah Vaughan and he was uh, her manager. That's oh. how I met him. So he ended up being her manager. Mm -hmm. Right. From bass player to manager. Yeah. Oh. And then the fourth fellow is John Clayton who's quite well known these days. Uh, I don't really, I'm not familiar with his work. I've never heard him play but obviously he's got a very strong name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. And that was two years ago? So, so all these guys are still alive? Oh, as I'm far sorry. as I know. I haven't heard anything about John Levy, who's the oldest. Yeah. They're all alive as far as I know. Who lives the closest to you? Ron Carter and, um, and, uh, what's the guy with son? Bob Cranshaw. Bob Cranshaw. Yeah, they both live in New York. And they're in New York. Yeah, you're not far from New York. Cool. Do you see any of them very much other mm. than that? I do see Cranshaw quite often, actually, considering. Because <clears throat> he's uh, involved with the Musicians Union. He actually has an office at the Musicians Union in New York, Local 802. And he okay. is um, influential in the way jazz is viewed via the Musicians Union. And I'm also, and I became connected with him that way, although I knew him before. <clears throat> but I became connected with him because the Musicians Union has a contract with the new school where I teach. And um, so he looked after that sort of. And so I see him at the union once in a while. And we always have fun nice. talking about stuff. We usually talk about Sonny Rollins because we both work with him. Mm -hmm. He decided, I guess, I don't really know the story, I never talked to him about it, but he decided to take a break or something, and during that time, that's when I was a Sony space player. Oh. Wow. Mm -hmm. How did, but, but you're also a bass player for Miles Davis, so Sonny was before Miles? After? Before. I had to be before. How did you end up being Miles' bass player? Well, I wasn't Miles' bass player. I happened to be in the recording studio when Michael Henderson didn't show up his bass player at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, my good buddy, Don Elias, was on the recording, and they're waiting for Michael, they're waiting for Michael, and finally Don says to him, there's a bass player in the control room. It's time to bring his bass out. Oh, that's Miles so that's talking. Yeah. Down to bring his bass out. Talk about out. being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> how, how I'll much... Talk, I'll take the credit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how much did you record with him? One song. We did two takes of it. That was it? You never played Does it need to be more? No. <laughs> no. I thought I, I was led.
led to believe by uh, somebody on a film I a film I'm filming that um, you were Miles Davis. Louis Gaska actually told me you were Miles Davis's bass player. That's because that's Louis. He's a fucking bullshitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a promo king. Oh really? <laughs> Louis, I really wasn't on that same line that he was, really. To, please, really, don't lump me into that shit, please. <laughs> that was the only recording you did with Miles, really? Do I need more? No, darling. No. I, just, I, just, I just heard. Again, it was... You had everybody believe in you were Miles Davis' bass player. Yeah, no, little vodka. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> None of our two after I call Ron. But, um... Cool. So, so you played with Sarah Vaughn. Were you at Sarah Vaughn with Sarah Vaughn? No, you said you weren't. When I saw her with Count Basie at Disneyland, would you try to pick me up? Anyway. Who tried to pick you up, Sarah? Sarah. Anyway, but go ahead. Were you, were you playing? How long and what years did you play with Sarah Vaughn? Nineteen seventy for eleven months. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the very first gig. This is kind of a fun story. The very first gig, let's see what you're going to put on this fucking video. The very, <laughs> the very first gig I had with Sash was in San Juan, Puerto Rico at a, at a hotel. And I get on a plane in Las Vegas and fly to Puerto Rico. And as I get on the plane, because they always board first class first, yes. I see I Count Basie sitting there. Now, I don't know Count Basie, but... Several years before, in 1968, I used to play, now I don't even know if he owned the place, but that's what it was called, Count Basie's Lounge mm -hmm. in Harlem. Mm -hmm. I played there with Willie Bo. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I see him sitting on the plane, and I go to my seat, and the plane takes off, and I decide, well, I'm going to go talk to Count. What the hell? We're in the same business. So I go up to him. And I would have done the same thing. That was, that was the days that you could actually walk into first class without the stewardess fucking freaking <laughs> out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's not happening today. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just got off that plane. <laughs> yeah. So I walked over to him and I says, Count, I says, my name's Gene Pearl. And I said, I played at your club in Harlem with Willie Bobo. And I don't think he said more than, eh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I just kept it talking. That's all he ever did. That's all he ever did. It could be. I don't know. That's, how he That's all I know. <laughs> That's exactly. That's why I, I bet he met a lot of friends. <laughs> That's so exactly anyway, how we talk to people. Anyway, go ahead. So, so I say to him, I said, yeah, and I'm on my way to San Juan. I said, I see you are too. <laughs> I said, I'm going there to play with Sarah Vaughan. He said, oh, yeah? That's so probably what else he said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we land, and I get to the hotel. I meet Sarah for an afternoon rehearsal, and then we go and play the gig. And when I walk into the room and get up on stage, who the fuck is sitting there right in the front row? It's Cal Basin, right? Okay, so yeah. we play the gig. It was fun. And afterwards... He invites the whole band up to his room. So we go up to his room, and we're all doing blow. Right? He too? Uh, <laughs> when Count Basie takes a snort, all the ashtrays are emptied. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that a direct quote from you? Did you hear that somewhere? Did I just say it? Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, this is good. This is for you. <laughs> Pretty good. So that's my Count Basie story. After that, I don't remember. Cass, Sarah, and I went across the street. Oh, yeah, there was more to a story that first night. We became close, right from the getty up. And we went across the street. There was a guy named Chino Santos, who used to run a club, music in a club called Norby Walters, right next door to Copacabana in New York. And he quit his gang and he, thing and he went to Puerto Rico and um, I knew about it somehow, I, I don't remember how, but I knew about it, so Sass said, what are we going to do now after we had finished at Count Basin's club? I said, let's go across the street, I know this guy's got a club over there. So we did, just the two of us went over. We went in and we sat at the bar. We got a drink, she said, cognac. And I said, hmm, okay, let me try that. 
<laughs> so we ordered a cognac. Now Chino and a piano player decide it's time to play music. It's a music club, right? So they start playing, and the piano, not only did it, was it out of tune with itself, but it was out of tune with the trumpet. Mm. So it was totally fucked. It sounded like insects were jumping out of it. Mm. And so they start playing, and the trumpet's going, and he's playing the piano, and we're drinking the cognac, and Sarah leans over to me, and she says, boy, that piano is horrible. Now, I already had enough experience to retort to her, oh, just give it a little while. It's going to sound better later. <laughs> so we have, we have a few more cognac. I swear to God. I don't know, an hour and a half goes by or something. She leans over to me and says, Yeah, it's not sounding so bad now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so why do they call her sass? I don't know. Of course, she was a bitch. I don't know. <laughs> no. I have no idea. She wasn't a bitch. Oh, no? <laughs> she wasn't oh. to me. I... <laughs> Who was I standing in front of? Elvin and somebody. Another heavyweight black motherfucker. So. And Elvin asked, I, I think it was in Chicago. I was passing through with Sass. I was working with her, Mr. Kelly's, and Elvin was playing a concert someplace else. I went to see him in the end was an afternoon concert. And during the break, I was standing there with another sax. I think it was a saxophone player. I can't remember who it was. And so Ellen says, how are you doing? I'm like, ah. And I said, well, you know, I'm working with Sass and stuff. Yeah, how's that? I said, oh, she's a sweetheart. And both Elvin and the saxophone player turned and looked at each other, and they all went like. <laughs> oh so, so I said to myself, gee, maybe my evaluation is not really correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, could be. But all I can tell you is in 11 months, except well, just a little too personal. But anyway, until near the end, it was a fabulous experience. It was great. Just one, we had just a blast. What's too personal? What's wrong? What huh? happened? No, I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, okay. Well, you have your private life. So if y'all did it, you did it. What else? So, <laughs> <laughs> I heard you played at Frank Sinatra's house once. Ah, you want to get that story in there, huh? Ah, well, we can do it another time. Because we have to finish editing. Mixing. Mixing, yeah, I'm almost, yeah. Well, you have time for another story? Do you want to hear it? Yeah, whatever. Story. Take your time. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. I do have to bounce everything out, though, so that'll take a while. Yeah, that's but, 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 go on. Mm. You want to bounce some stuff while we're, yeah, no. No, 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 it's fine. No. Last story, and we get out of here. Okay, so, I'm in New York, and I'm struggling to make a point, and... Somehow, I don't know how, I got hooked up with a big band in Brooklyn. And it was run by a, game, a guy named Pat Rizzo. Italian. <laughs> <A fucking laughs> Italian. Irish yeah. Italian, okay. And we never worked a gig. We just rehearsed, right? For no money. It was just, well, so it was an experience, so I used to do it. And then next thing I know is he tells me, I don't know, right? he says, I'm moving to... L.A. He said, if you come out that way, look me up. Okay, so I'll. So now I got his phone number. Right? So I don't know how much time passes. Anyway, I wind up, well, we're back up just a little bit, was that, no, nah, you don't need to know this. Right? Anyway, I'm in L.A. now. You can't do that. You have to tell now. No, it's too involved. It's too involved. Okay. It's not necessary. All right, all anyway, right. I'm, I'm in L.A., and I arrive in L.A., I don't know when, sometime in the morning, whatever the fuck it was, and I immediately call him amongst some other calls to let people know I'm in town. And he picks up the phone, and I say, Pat, I'm here. Blah, 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 blah. I hang up the phone. Half an hour later, he calls back. He says, what are you doing New Year's Eve? This was like early December, sort of. And I said, nothing. He says, how would you like to go to Frank Sinatra's house, play a New Year's Eve party? And I said, let me see. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Let me think about well, it. Yeah, let no, me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I said, sure. You know, so he said, OK, cool. That's it. You got the gig. Boom. Hang up the phone. Pick up the phone. Dial my mom. She answered the phone. Now, 
My mom's got an Italian son from New Jersey, right? And I says, Mom, hi, are you sitting down? She says, yeah. And I said, guess where I'm going New Year's Eve? He said, I don't know, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Frank Sinatra's house. I'm going to play at his house. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> she pauses and screams. Okay. Pause. Tell him to give you some money. Tell him to give you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so now I asked Rizzo, the guy who called me, you know, I said, well, where is it? He says, it's in Palm Springs. He says, it's going east. I said, how long is it going to take me to get there? I don't remember what he said. Bye bye. I said, okay, cool. New Year's Eve comes. I get in the car. I had to borrow a base that was falling apart. So I brought my electric with me just in case the damn base really didn't fall totally apart. And I start driving. And I'm driving for a while, I'm driving for a while, I'm driving for a while. And all of a sudden I see a sign, Palm Spring X number of miles. I don't remember what it was. I look at my clock and I said, I'm going to be fucking late. I was late to find some after party. Oh my gosh. Probably about 10, 15 minutes late. Mm -hmm. Right? Refine the place, I roll into the to the parking lot. Oh, the guys are standing there. <laughs> <laughs> Big guys. Oh, okay. yeah. Big Italians. What do you want? So I'm here to play in a bunch of car over there. Park the car. <laughs> <laughs> I pull the upright out. I get the electric out. I got the upright in this hand. I got the electric in this hand. on! So I start walking over. It's like... First of all, this comes later, but at that point I didn't know. Where you're living with your mom now, it's a house, right? Yeah. It's a house, right? Yeah, yeah. Like this, it's a house, yeah, yeah. right? What do you got in the house? You got a living room, you got a kitchen, you got a, right? Frank had the same thing, except every room was a house. <laughs> it was a compound. They called it a compound. with a helica helicopter, right? Yeah. So they were like these little winding paths with lights and, you know, it was beautiful manicured everything. So they said, walk that way. Now... I'm hearing the band play. I'm saying, oh man, I'm going to wind up in the Los Angeles Bay late to Frank's house. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so they said, you know, walk that way. So I start, and as I approach that little walkway with the lights, this figure comes darting out of the dark, right? Darting out from the dark. Have you heard this story before, Nick? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. And it's him. Frank Sinatra himself. He comes right up to me and he says, his first words, well, no, forget it. He says, I'll take the fender. Follow me. Really? I hand him the electric yeah. bass. Right? He takes me around. The band is playing. I walk in. As soon as I come around the corner, I look in. The first person I see standing up there tall is Spiro Agnew. I don't know if you know that name. Mm -hmm. He used to be vice president of the United yeah, States. Yeah, Andrew Nixon. Uh, and so anyway, he takes me in and gets me set up. I play the gig and everything. I'm going to the gig. And you know who else was there? Uh, Ginger Rogers. Woo! She was an old woman. Yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> God, beautiful. And the other thing that I like to tell about this story is during the break, there was a room off to the side of the party room. And I walked in and it was a, probably a room maybe up to this doorway, this big, yeah, about this wide like that, and the ceiling, would, yeah, about like that. And that's what it was. There were no windows in the room, only the door to walk in. On every single wall, from the floor, from the floor to the ceiling, on all four walls, the gold and platinum records. Gold and platinum <laughs> records. I'm fucking, I looked at it, New Zealand. No. I'm fucking weird. So you can get a gold or platinum record or CD these days in any country. It doesn't matter. I don't it know just, about any country, but you I can mean, have but it I in mean, many countries. It, it, it doesn't, it's not necessarily ascribed to A gold labor. record in the United States is for the United States, period. So it's per oh, country. Yeah. What? Really? So what? it's per country. Yeah. Really? Why, why do you think you'd have that many of them? Yeah, from all, all over. Iceland, where the fuck? 
Yeah. Where in business? Of course, Iceland, you only to sell four, huh? <laughs> yeah, <that's it>. yeah. <laughs> everybody has a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in every house. I've got lots of people <laughs> love my music in Helsinki and Stockholm. And anyway, okay. So, <laughs> that doesn't make wow. it So, wonderful story. Wow. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I heard that. I was basically recording that room just for that. That's and you know bang. what? Which is really, really the entertaining. Saxophone player recorded it. Recorded it. And uh, Frank sang. You had it. Four tunes. And when I made a cassette of it, I copied the cassette and I brought it home when I finally got back to New Jersey. I pulled it out of my bag when I came home to my mama. Aww. And I showed her the cassette. And you know what it says on the cassette? I still have it. It says Perla and Sinatra. That's <laughs> really funny, too. Like, That's like, funny. Because yeah. like, we, cause we, we did, did that. Did I show you that? Thing. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we transferred that. that I, show, I heard all of them, but we transferred just one of them, I think. Yeah. And that, that is hilarious. It's really funny. Because you can tell he's just. He's drunk. Like a motherfucker. Drunk? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I played going, it for you. Going nuts. Last night. Yeah, he played it last night. Oh, he did? Oh, cool. Last cool. night. Oh. Oh. Play it for me, also. Nice. Is that when I was drinking the vodka? She even sounds like me when she laughs. Guy be wearing his shoes, you know, okay. it's so amazing. How oh, much we'll you try it later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if you hear any noises and stuff, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah. I'm doing <laughs> I, I, where, where are you parking yourself? I'm sleeping here. Mexico and following this tour of musicians. Um, the fuck you tour. Yeah. The fuck you tour. <laughs> really AKA, the fuck you AKA, tour. AKA, the fuck you tour. It will say that too. And <laughs> it will. No. Yes. It can. At the festivals, it will. I oh, may not. Okay. Not on the I album won't do album, big no. screen. No, no. You want a no. Grammy, baby? I like that. <laughs> Don't call it the fuck you tour. You guys want another corn by any chance? Could you? Uh, no thanks. Yes? Yeah. Ah! You want another one? No, no thanks. What's wrong with you, man? You want another one? Come on, no thanks. Come on, man. I know you love your corn, Gene. I'm cool, though. I'm cool. 